Stay tuned to much music and enter today. <laughs> One of Rock's stated objectives is to challenge, to confront, uh, to, to never conform. Then David Bowie has obviously been carrying the flag in front of the pack for many, many years. Um, he was making rock music videos before there were such things, he and his directors, of course. And he showed us how to change from um, Ziggy Stardust to Berlin Anks Meister, his days with, uh, you know, and um, finally to end up being the Thin White Duke and then finally David Bowie himself. He has shown countless artists, Prince, for example, that change in rock and roll to keep people off balance is a very powerful tool. And he's a wonderful guy, very funny, has a wonderful view of himself. Join us now for our interview with David Bowie and Backtracks. As promised uh, on this edition of Much West, we have a very special uh, co-host, as it were. He doesn't know this yet, Mr. David Bowie. What is it you have there? I just, I just want you folks to see this. Can you get a good close-up of that? It looks to be a box. It's a, a box, you see? Look. Oh, isn't that lovely? This is box. All right. It's called, it has written on the side, artistic coin box full of mystery. And indeed, I've got some yen here, 100 yen. We'll put one of the yen. Can you see the yen going in the top there? Oh, wait a minute. Where did it go? <laughs> oh, another. How much more can it take? Well, I'll tell you for a fact, it can take up to 90 coins. And you, look, isn't that great? It's interesting, that is an illusion, of course. And for the longest time, you dealt in illusion on the stage in the form of characters. And for the longest time as well, the audience, your audiences, had a hard time uh, separating the artist from the, his creations. And I think it can be said in the 70s as well that you had that problem. Uh, yeah. This could be said. This could be said. So is all of this being then put to rest with this tour? <sighs> I hoped that it had been put to rest in uh, 1976. <laughs> but it, it did follow me around for a long time. In fact, I, I haven't done a tour where I've been a character since 76. Um, let me see. The first one after that was the tour. The first tour that I did with Adrian Blue and Simon House and Carlos and all those guys uh, in 78 and that was uh, pretty much representing the music from Low and Heroes um, and after that was the Sirius Moonlight tour which again I feel wasn't particularly representing any particular character and then the Glass Spider tour and then this one so I, I think really the last tour that I indulged myself with the character was the Station the Station tour in 76 with the thin white rope free just be David Bowie on stage and not a character. I felt that it did a lot better for my off-stage life to uh, not carry a character around because I, I would get very method about it in the earlier days and I would carry the character through to my everyday life. Uh, Let me take you back to the early 70s. You're Ziggy Stardust. You bring the Ziggy tour to the US. It's your first US appearance. What was your preconceived notion of what the States was going to be like? I always felt the grass was really green in America. And literally, when I got off the plane, and uh, we were driving into, I think the first place I got off in America was in LA, I think. I went, the first place I went to was in LA. And the bits of grass that we saw on the banks on the side by the road were unbelievably green. I couldn't believe how green you got the grass over there. I don't know how you did it. That was my initial impression of America. Um, and I think that carried through, actually. I think that, that carried through, that there was an element of color in America, North America, that was so much brighter and uh, a little more theatrical than anything in Europe in that way. And the audience reaction? The audience reaction was just unbelievable for the Ziggy shows. I mean, we, I think, I mean, we had a good audience reaction in Europe. In fact, uh, probably the Ziggy thing started there first, but it certainly was um, in taken over and engulfed by the uh, uh, reaction in America. Uh, talking uh, vintage footage here, we, we appreciate the video legacy that you've given us so far. Did you find that at some point uh, they became a liability that people expected you to recreate the videos on stage? Not only that, I would say, and I'm very big on this, I think that what it's done to the present, to a number of uh, performers that are working over the last year or two, 
the whole idea of performance has changed radically. Uh, one, a lot of them seem to feel that they have to reproduce as closely as possible the look of their video. Um, two, a lot of them don't have the personalities to actually be able to conduct themselves on stage with any career. And thirdly, the idea of artists who lip sync 90% of their shows and you still pay the sick, same ticket price as you would to see an artist who doesn't, who works, who works their balls off, I think it's disgusting. I can't believe the amount of artists that are now working and that you're not hearing a note of what they sing. A lot of them can't sing. <laughs> I, I stop there. <laughs> oh, it's sad. I think, I think that particular change in the way performance is going is, is really sad. It really is. You know, I got just an aside here. I can't believe the way Bob Dylan is being treated these days by critics and, and some fans. It's like, what have you done for us lately? I cannot believe that. I, I'm such a fan of Dylan. I'm more than a fan. It's a man who, well, I guess. No, because most of the backstabbing on Dylan is coming from his own generation. I've noticed a lot of the critics who are saying such harmful, harmful things about Dylan are in his age group, which I think is just so sad, you know. I think also one of the other great voices at the moment is, uh, is Neil Young. I think the album that he had out recently, um, Freedom, was just first class. Great piece of writing. Lovely stuff. Was there ever a time in your music career where you felt that you had worn out your welcome with your audiences? <sighs> to be quite honest with you, no. Uh, I found that every tour that we've ever done has been, has accelerated over the last one. Uh, hmm. The one thing that I have always had as a performer is, a, is, is an audience. <laughs> um, but I don't think that would stop me even if it did start diminishing. I mean, I, I just like working. Sure. I like performing.